Howdy. This video is on molecular shapes and polarity. Whether or not a molecule is polar or nonpolar depends on the shape of the molecule. Polar molecules and nonpolar molecules have different types of intermolecular forces, and this affects their physical properties like melting point, boiling point, solubility, viscosity. And so polarity of molecules and shapes of molecules are fairly important. After watching this video, you should be able to determine if a bond is polar or nonpolar, just using the difference electronegativity. You should be able to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar by considering the bond's polarity as well as the shape of the molecule. The shape of the molecule is very important. And so we've seen that elements often try to get noble gas configuration by either sharing electrons in terms of covalent bonds or by transferring electrons in terms of forming ionic compounds. Now we can look at two elements and based on the difference electronegativity, we can see are the bonds going to be equally shared or is there going to be a transfer of electrons and ionic compounds will form. And so if the difference electronegativity is greater than two, then most likely it's going to be an ionic compound. If the difference electronegativity is less than 0.5, then the bonding electrons are going to be equally shared. If the difference electronegativity is between 0.5 and 2, then there's going to be unequal sharing of the bonding electrons and you can have a polar bond. Now remember that difference electronegativity is always defined as positive. You always take the bigger electronegativity minus the smaller one. And so electronegativity is the ability to of an atom to attract electrons to itself in a molecule. The greater the atom's electronegativity, the greater its ability to attract electrons to itself in a molecule. Fluorine is the most electronegative with electronegativity of, of approximately four. But difference electronegativity is very helpful to determining is a bond polar or nonpolar? Are the bonding electrons shared equally or sh shared unequally? Now a nice depiction of HCl would be something like this. You know, molecules are not really balls and sticks. They're actually more glob-like. The surface here is one value of electron density. Um, it looks kind of like a pair because the chlorine is bigger than the hydrogen. Now if we put a charge on the surface and measure the potential it sees, um, we can actually color this based on electrostatic potential. And so the red corresponds to a partial negative charge and the blue corresponds to a partial positive charge. And so HCl is a polar molecule because the chlorine grabs more of the bonding electrons. Um, the hydrogen grabs less and so it's going to have a partial positive charge. And so if the bond of a diatomic molecule is polar, then the diatomic molecule is polar. And so for diatomic molecules and only diatomic molecules, um, if the bond is polar, then the molecule is polar. If you have more than two atoms, then you have to consider the shape of the molecule. And so if we look at a couple of examples, hydrogen, hydrogen, difference electronegativity is zero, bonding electrons equally shared, and so it has to be nonpolar. Fluorine, fluorine, Difference of electronegativity is zero. Bonding electrons equally shared, so it has to be nonpolar. Um, HF, F is much more polar than hydrogen, sorry, much more electronegative than hydrogen. And so you have a pretty large difference electronegativity. And so the more of the bonding electron density is on the fluorine, and so that gives it a partial negative charge. Less of the bonding electron density is on the hydrogen, and so that gives it a partial positive charge. Uh, chlorine and bromine, and so the difference is less than 0.5, and so that would be characterized as being nonpolar. And so again, for diatomics and only diatomics, only when you have just two atoms of molecule, if the bond is polar, then the molecule is polar. By atomic molecule, a polar bond must lead to a polar molecule. Consider hydrogen fluoride, shown here as the Lewis structure changes to a ball and stick model enclosed within the space filling shape. Note the polar arrows and the colors. If red indicates high electron density and blue indicates low, you can see that the F end of the molecule is much more negative than the H end, and thus HF is highly polar. Between two electric plates with the field off, the molecules lie every which way. With the field on, however, they become oriented with their negative ends facing the positive plate and their positive ends facing the negative plate. And so while it's true that polar molecules will align in an electric field, the most important part is that polar molecules could have a stronger attraction to other polar molecules. 
And so you see that the partial positive of this molecule is attracted to the partial negative of that one. And so polar molecules, you have a partial positive side and a partial negative side. That's the best way of thinking about polar molecules. One end has to be partial positive, the other end has to be partial negative. And again, because you have the partial charges on polar molecules, they can have a stronger electrostatic attraction between other molecules. And so whether or not a molecule is polar or nonpolar affects a lot of physical properties like melting point, boiling point, solubility, viscosity, etc. And so again, if a diatomic molecule has a polar bond, then the molecule is polar. That's only for a diatomic molecule. And diatomic just means two atoms. So a molecule composed of just two atoms. And like I said, a polar molecule, one end is partial negative and the other end is partial positive. Fluorine fluorine is nonpolar, and so you don't have a partial positive and a partial negative end. Now, if you have more than two atoms, it gets a little bit more challenging. You have to think about the shape. And again, go back over the VSEPR theory and molecular shapes. So whether or not molecules polar or nonpolar depends on bonds, shapes of molecules, and presence of lone pairs. A molecule has more than two atoms, its shape can affect the polarity in a crucial way. For example, in carbon dioxide, since oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, each bond is highly polar. But the linear molecular shape makes the bond polarities cancel each other. So the CO2 molecule is nonpolar. Notice that the orientation of the molecules is random, whether the field is off or on. And so again, the importance is polarity affects the interaction between the molecules. And so f are the CO bonds and CO2 polar or nonpolar? Well, we looked at different selective negativity. It's greater than 0.5, and so I'd say those bonds are polar. Is the molecule polar? Well, to be polar, one side has to be partial positive, the other side has to be partial negative. And so we see the ends where the oxygen are, are partial negative, because again, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon and the middle is partial positive, but one end is not partial positive and the other end is not partial negative, and so CO2 has to be nonpolar. Now, the other thing that we'll see is that if a molecule has a center atom surrounded by the same type of outer atoms and no lone pairs on the center, then it has to be nonpolar. And so please remember, you can have polar bonds and the molecule can still be nonpolar, um, if a molecule like CO2 has a center atom surrounded by the same type of outer atoms and no lone pairs on the center, then it absolutely has to be nonpolar. Here we have carbon tetrafluoride. We have a center atom surrounded by the same type of outer atoms, no lone pairs on the center. It has to be nonpolar. And so in both these cases, the bonds are polar and the molecules are nonpolar. Are the boron fluorine bonds in BF3 polar or nonpolar? And so if we look at the electronegativities, fluorine is four, boron is two, and so that get, gives us a difference of two, and so those should be extremely polar bonds. Is the molecule polar or nonpolar? And so again, we see we have a center atom surrounded by the same type of outer atoms, no lone pairs on the center, and so it's going to have to be nonpolar. The case of boron trifluoride is similar to that of CO2. Because the three highly polar bonds point to the corners of an equilateral triangle, the bond polarities cancel each other, and BF3 is nonpolar. And so again, the molecules are oriented randomly with the field off or on. And so again, for a molecule to be polar, one end has to be partial positive, the other one has to be partial negative. And so if you have one center atom surrounded by the same type of outer atoms and no lone pair than the center, it has to be nonpolar. And so again, we're seeing a molecule that has very polar bonds, but is nonpolar. This one's kind of interesting if we look at um, difluoroethene. And so the fluorine-chlorine bonds are polar. Fluorine, again, is the most electronegative. And so you'd expect to have a partial negative charge up here. The carbon-hydrogen bonds are nonpolar. The difference is less than 
And so you should expect that this will have a partial negative charge, and so this molecule will be polar. We can actually compare this with one of its isomers. And so remember, isomers are molecules that have the same set of atoms, but say a different arrangement or spatial or geometric. And so these two are geometric isomers. Um, this one would be called cis dichloroethene. This one is trans dichloroethene. And this one's gonna be more polar than that one because the chlorine are one side of the molecule. Or even cases when two molecules have similar shapes and identical compositions, but different polarities. Compounds such as cis and trans dichloroethylene behave this way. Both have the formula C2H2Cl2, and both have trigonal planar shapes around the two carbon atoms. Yet, the trans compound is nonpolar because the carbon chlorine bond polarities cancel each other, while the cis compound is highly polar because they reinforce each other. Since greater polarity leads to stronger attractions among the molecules, the cis compound boils over 18 degrees higher than the trans compound. And so it's kind of interesting, even though they're composed of the same exact set of atoms, they are isomers, one has a boiling point higher than the other because the arrangement of the atoms leads to that molecule being polar. Polar polarity leads to stronger attraction between the molecules, and so you have to go to higher temperature to actually go from the liquid to the gas in that molecule. And so whether or not a molecule is polar or nonpolar affects its physical properties like boiling point, melting point, solubility, and viscosity. And so a question you might see is, is xenon tetrafluoride polar or nonpolar? And so first we have to determine electron geometry. Remember elements in the third row and lower like xenon can have more than eight electrons. In this case, it's actually surrounded by two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons. And if we do the lowest, the um, formal charge, we'd see the formal charge of xenon is zero. Formal charge of the fluorine is zero. And all noble gases are typically interactive. The heavy ones do form a few compounds, xenon, krypton, um, and even argon can form one or two. There are no known compounds with helium or neon. And so what is electron geometry around the xenon? Well, we got six regions, and so that would give us uh, octahedral electron geometry. Remember, for octahedral electron geometry, if you have a, a lone pair, it can take any of those positions. If you have two lone pairs, they have to be opposite. And so the lone pairs want to be as far apart from each other as possible because they take up a little bit more space. And so you have octahedral electron geometry. You'll have square planar molecular shape. And so xenon tetrafluoride is nonpolar. You have these lone pairs, but again, if you look at the molecule, you do not have one side partial positive and one side partial negative. For a molecule to be polar, one end part has to be partial positive and the other end has to be partial negative, and you do not see that with xenon tetrafluoride. And again, the shape would be square planar. So for the nitrate ion, we actually have three resonant structures. Is that going to be polar or nonpolar? Well, it's going to be nonpolar. And again, if you got a center atom surrounded by the same type of outer atoms and no lone pairs on the center, it has to be nonpolar. You cannot have one end partial positive and the other end partial negative. And so molecules that have lone pair, no lone pairs on the center atom and are surrounded by the same type of outer atoms have to be nonpolar. Now, if you have substitute, so here we have CO2, if we substitute one of the oxygen, uh, sulfur form the oxygen, then we actually can form a, a um, polar molecule. For the BF3, if we change the fluorine to a hydrogen, we can form a polar molecule. For carbon tetrafluoride, if we change one of the fluorine to hydrogen, we actually do form a polar molecule. And so whether or not a molecule is polar or nonpolar does affect its physical properties. So it's important to be able to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar. But to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar, it's best to remember that one end has to be partial positive, the other end has to be partial negative. And you have to think about the molecular shape, the lone pairs of electrons, and whether or not the bonds themselves are polar or nonpolar. I hope that helps.